second video will go into detail about analog versus digital video and processing and the effect of analog circuits affecting resolution, color rendering, and dynamic range of video. I want to point out that if you don't analyze all of an image, you usually are ignoring something, and that will trick you into making very, very inaccurate statements about things or coming to conclusions that don't make sense. Simple to the point, a body-worn camera at a distance of around three feet from a subject can detect higher resolution and better color rendering when it's also in an area with much better lighting, as in direct sunlight coming through a window to the person's right, lighting up a room and creating a uh, all-over glow for the whole room, lighting up very, very hard to see details. Now, before we go any further, um, pause the video and count how many colors, primary colors, you can see in the image on that shoe to the left. Okay. Now, we're going to be comparing this to a CCTV camera, security camera, at a school that is at a distance that looks at looks like it's at 20 feet diagonally. So, to tell you about this, uh, we're going to do this really quickly. Details of the shoe that should be visible from every camera if they're decent. Number one, we have a sole, a standard white sole. The bottom here is of a, I don't know what to call the color, it's, it's a cream color. There's a white line here, and if you don't know about it, it's hard to see here because, guess what, the video kind of munged it together. This is a line that goes along here that is supposed to represent visually on a shoe a line that used to be where the threads would go to hold a shoe together. They're still included when they mold the soles, but they just don't, they don't put stitches in them, they put fake stitches. If you have a pair of shoes, you can look at them, and a lot of you will be wearing that. This groove in here is usually for protecting those threads. Again, they're not used much anymore. But that means that in here is probably a black line, but we don't know that. And if you look at this image, and I'll upload just these images, even though that might be a completely black line, the video camera that's being used here, even though we're getting better color and better resolution, is still mixing them together because white goes ahead and blows over or blooms over the top of black. White colors are dominant. Now, you can see a yellowish orange here. You can see what looks like a brown or orange color here, pink or purple, red, did you notice there's a blue patch here? While looking at this image on your computer in high resolution, you might not have been able to see it because it might not show up. And depending on the lighting in the room, it wouldn't show up on a video camera because color is secondary to resolution in video cameras. This is in video cameras that are analog. It's always been that way because they use a compositing presumption called NTSC. In other countries, it might be PAL or whatever, but the point is, it's compressing the color differently than the video black and white data. Because human beings generalize color, most video cameras do not do high resolution, high quality, precision color mapping to an image. They just don't. It's the way it is. Uh, you can also do a bunch of online tests where you see that your, your eyes don't do very good at this. Now, I want to point out that in this image, again, we have a body-worn camera, better resolution and better color than maybe we think we get, but everything's still out of focus a little bit because there's motion going on, it's being compressed, this is uploaded onto a, a Twitter posting, this is the official upload from the police department, it's probably been processed a bit, but more importantly, the camera element might use an analog output or it might use a, um, a well, analog to digital conversion of the analog input that again, just kind of throws out data. But some of you probably didn't know there's a blue patch here. I'll leave a link to the video image here and also the video. But anyway, is it surprising that a camera that is used by police on a regular basis that has to get information much more often that is critical would do a better job at three feet in bright light with the sunlight blasting through a window right there than a school CCTV camera, security camera, at 20 feet away from the subject that's actually not focused correctly, that isn't really relied on getting images literally every day. It's only supposed to be there if necessary. And yes, you can hear, if you want to look it up, you can see uh, city councils and school council meetings where they're screaming, I'm not paying for better security cameras. You can hear people say that. I'm sure that's not going to age like milk. So anyway, let's move forward. Again, 
blue, red, orange, all sorts of stripes, but you have to be able to see this separate little stripe here. And look at the width of this cuff. That'll become important. The spacing under here to see these colors would require that you have about a cuff's width of, of dead space visible. I want to point out another thing is, if this is seen at a distance, the black and white colors would get washed out because they all occupy the same dynamic range. Let's move on. Here is the image of the same person before they were on the ground. By the way, the previous image is of this right ankle here bent backwards as the person fell backwards. We see in this image a white stripe, a graying out blurring effect because the camera isn't focusing at all, and then a black line on the back. Let's go back one notch. There's the black line in the back right there. So right there we have a white stripe that should be visible, but again, it's further ahead near where the ankle bone is. And no, we can't discern it. The tops of these shoes look black. And if we didn't see this tiny little hint at a black line, and we didn't see this one that's a little bit less, you know, subtle, we would assume that these were black-tipped white shoes, which would be very unusual. <clears throat> which has also been mentioned for some reason on TikTok because people don't look stuff up. Now I'm going to do something simple here. If you're fixating on the shoes because that's the subject matter, don't. Look at things that have nothing to do with it. Number one, this is obviously two frames from the same video. Notice there's a contrast change between the two frame timings. Yeah, this is called, I think it's called specular effect. Being in a room will change how bright the room is. Turning a certain way will change it. Yeah. Also, the camera may be compensating for brightness and contrast changes so they can get as much data as possible. Now, in a sea of almost exclusively black and white where the shoes are, you don't think that the camera, either, even if it's digital or analog, would throw out the color data. Again, analog cameras, the ones you had in the old days, did this too. You just have to go look for a camera like that and do an experiment. Unless you have really bright light, the color is thrown out because it's not needed because it's a tiny portion of the data, because it's overwhelmed by the dynamic range of the black and white here. I'm going to go back to the previous image real quick. That blue color is almost completely invisible, but it's still detectable in this image. But that's with extremely bright light. Now, the difference between this white and this black is a range of around 200 to 1 dynamic range. In order for red to exist, you'd have to have it be exclusively red and have the same contrast range. But wait a minute, the contrast range is still occupied by these two. This is maximum, this is minimum. So this would have to be mapped, because that's how cameras work, somewhere in the middle, which means subtlety goes out the window. This thing being yellow would get quantized to be white, because it's closer to being a white color than this. And the blue would be turned to black. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's more blue on there. Let's go back here. Do we see any color at all? No. Do we see any color in the pants? No. Do we see a cuff's worth of space there up? No, because it's dropped down because the person doesn't fit their pants. Let's go back again. Do we see the little white line here? No. Do we see any color in here? Well, actually, in the full screen image, which I can't show because it's uh, it'll get me flagged, you can see color. The bottom here has a slight color to it. There is some color, but it's very hard to see. The only colors that show up in this image are the arm, part of the face, the hat, and this blue object. I don't know what it is. Then we see the arm has turned suddenly black and white grayscale. You see, you have to look at the whole image to see what's going on. Yes, if we compare that, it will actually be a color. But visually, do you really believe that this is the same arm? Well, they are. I want to point out the thing that's doing this. A person, I don't know if you know about this, but people combat CCTV security cameras, recording them as a protest in China by wearing bright colors because it makes the camera screw up skin tones. It, it does. Whether you have dark skin or light skin, putting on bright red and preferably bright blue on another part of the body, then the camera has to prioritize primary colors and it starts throwing out color. Everybody looking at the shoes and looking for color, what happened to her arm? Now we look at the hat. Do you really believe the hat glows with a blurry pattern over it or is it just defocused? Again, the camera lens could have been cleaned with tissue paper and Windex and a feather duster. And we also get, again, this is a brighter side here, so we get more color. This is a darker side, so we get this. So yeah, when we would be able to see maybe color, it's going to be a situation where we may not at all. 
period. Again, the arm doesn't have any color. Why would you assume we could discern the colors from the shoes? TikTok. So anyway, this is how far away that man is wearing a body camera on his chest, looking down at the person on the ground. And you can barely see any of this. Even if they're high resolution and wide angle video, when you zoom in on something, the resolution goes to crap. And again, even this, this isn't really high resolution. This is a zoom in from the image. You can see stripe lines going up and down instead of right and left. It goes from being color to being black or an extremely dark blue when that probably isn't accurate. The camera for the body camera and the camera for the, for the, uh, for the security camera are all doing compression to make stuff work. Remember, they have limited bandwidth in the wires. Analog cameras have been doing this for decades. This is before microchips and stuff. This is back when it was tubes, okay? And it doesn't matter if you make it high definition. When you upload it on the net, it's going to do this as well. And again, this video shows that her face is nearly free of color and her arm is literally black and white. But somehow someone's complaining we can't see flame jobs on the side of this when the cuff of the pants are covering it and when the camera is essentially throwing it out because it's not considered visually important to it. And again, yes, it could be refocused, but if you walk through, you could do an experiment like this yourself and test this. This room has lower brightness level than this room did. And that's 20 feet away. This one's three feet away or so, maybe four. I mean, we have almost ideal lighting conditions to get color. And the best we could get with the blue is a blotch that is probably not the right color. So if anybody on, Twi on Twitch or Twitter or anyplace else or anywhere like TikTok is saying that the, the person should have, must have changed their shoes or something, they're ignoring the fact that the leg cuff went up, that the color is being tossed out by the cameras, and very different brightness and lightning conditions. Anybody promoting this stuff needs to be told, you're just wrong. You don't have to give them a link to this. Just tell them they're wrong and stop paying attention to them because they're a bunch of influencers looking for internet cred. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.